Hello, welcome to Circuit to the Abyss. I'm your host, Richard Gerlach, and I just discovered this strange black book that I'm trying to figure out what it means. I'm getting a weird feeling from it. Any opinion on this, Matt? <laughs> I mean, I feel like you should use it to explore and find weird, weird uh, caves. What do you think, Mitt LeMay? Should I go to these caves? I mean, this person online called Rose, she said we should do it, so I think we should just better go. Fuck yeah, let's go. I mean, you can uh, trust somebody with the name Rose, right? Yeah, it's so common, right? <laughs> so common. Today we're going to be discussing Mysterium Terendum uh, Terendum <laughs> by Laird Baron. You can listen to it on Pseudopod. It has been split into three parts. <laughs> or it's also located in this collection, Oculation, which is available anywhere you can buy books. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, I also want to say it's also free on Audible, if you have Audible Plus. Oh, look at oh. that. You it have no is. excuses. Mm -hmm. This is a really fun story. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. and, and it's funny. I So for listeners, we, we, we call a bit of an... Uh, not to say audible twice, but we called a bit of a, a change because we were going to do a really depressing story, yes. and, <laughs> which I read and we'll do next week. But with all the, <laughs> I, I, I'm just delaying the six year old murder. <laughs> you're, you're just delaying the child death. That, that's all. That. That's uh, that's good. I mean, we need, like I said, we needed to, uh, we need to space. We need to space out the depressing things. <laughs> yes. So uh, with um, and I know we're recording on a Saturday, and this comes out on a Thursday. So we'll let's just preface it and say, fingers yeah. crossed, things are turning out well. Um, but Laird Baron is in the hospital. If you're part of the horror community, you've probably seen the GoFundMe and all the sharing John Langan has been doing. Uh, so. Felt appropriate to kind of maybe bring up one of his stories and talk about it. And again, hopefully things are going well, but I'm sure the good GoFundMe is still going to be out there so you can go and help support Laird Barron. So anyway, I, I wanted I, to push back and and, yeah. and talk talk him. That's so, good. I, I really appreciate that John Langan is, you know, keeping us updated. Yeah. Well, John Langan and Barron are like super close friends. Yeah. Um, so nice. like Whenever they go to signings or like conventions, they go together. Um, Aw, that's so like, cute. They're like <laughs> best. So like they're super close, and yeah. this obviously means a lot to John. Yeah. And Laird, like I've met Laird once. He's a super nice guy. Like he's one of the nicest guys I've ever met. Him and John are like they're they're saints. Like they're just super nice. I yeah. mean. And, most of us in the horror community, we are super nice people. You know? <laughs> and, um, <laughs> even, yeah. though, even, even though our that. minds are completely depraved, we, we are um, super nice to other people. <laughs> and also, one thing I do want to say about Laird as well, just if our audience hasn't already donated uh, or knows about it, he has actually been sick since September. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's been in a sick bed since September, which means from September to this month, he's had no income. Yeah. Um, and he has no health insurance. And yeah. he's in the hospital yeah. right now. So he's going to need a lot of help once everything kind of comes down to it. Um, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed for him because he's a really good dude and I want more fiction. fiction I, this is just so stupid for me. I mean, <laughs> this is like he, his income is being a writer and that doesn't qualify. I'm, I'm going to shit on your fucking health system for a lot of time now. <laughs> it's okay. Because, because it fucking sucks. Yeah, no, uh, we, we have a terrible healthcare system in this it's country. It's just right? awful. Like, guys, what the fuck? It's it's just dumb is what I, it is. I just, uh, like, I just now recently, like, actually today, I had to I had to change my medications for my high cholesterol. And my doctor told me that I had to take two medications now. And I'm like, okay, fine. Whatever to keep it down, I guess. And I was really, I was actually getting a little bit scared for how much the these medications would cost because they're not common like a lot of people don't have it i think and because of my health care like our universal health care that we have here i only had to pay about 25 bucks for both yeah, that's not bad. <laughs> that's not, so like, yeah I, the i was <laughs> sick back in back in december 
like I was I was in bed for like two weeks, really, really sick. Mm-hmm. And um, I had to go to urgent care to get checked out because all of a sudden was wrong with me. Going to urgent care twice to get checked out twice. The end of the month cost me 200 bucks. <laughs> and I was in urgent care for like 30 minutes at max. Um, and then the medication they gave me ran me about $80. <laughs> oh, like I said, you have more <laughs> like have, it, it needs to change and if it doesn't take Bernie Sanders who the fuck will do it it's pretty much from from in my perspective the insurance companies have a lot of fucking money and they use that money to lobby for our politicians to get them yeah. to support having single payer healthcare so these insurance companies get more money and the politicians get more money due to lobbying yeah it's and just so it's stuck insane in the circle and it's I insane. don't think America's going to change anytime soon. Uh, I mean, I thought like a world pandemic would help see things through, but apparently not. I mean, it makes worse. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. makes worse. It was like, oh, we have a common enemy now, so maybe we should all band together and just fight this thing. People are like, nope, fuck <laughs> that shit. Every man for himself. Yeah, yeah. You're like, you're like, what the? And now I'm like, well, zombie apocalypse is going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, good times. Oh, good times. Yeah. I think so the- it, let's maybe go because it's getting depressing again. <laughs> yeah. I was just going to say we should go into our weekly recommendations. Yes. Yeah, so I was going to say yeah, that too. I was like, well, it's a different kind of depression, guys. <laughs> yeah, right. Somewhere. Well, speaking of a different kind of depressing, um, <laughs> I decided to rewatch everything everywhere all at once last week. Yay. Which is such a great movie. I need it's to watch sad it. Sad and happy and heartfelt. I cry every time I watch that movie. I really need to watch it. It sounds amazing. It's great. It's it super good. Fantastic. It's like it is. It is so good. I I'll me- send you a message, Villa May, but I can get you access to it. Ooh, um. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there there are two. The, now I have two films I need to watch this weekend, and we're tonight after because. <laughs> The, the the World Cup of Handball is right now. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and uh, Iceland is competing, of course. So oh, yeah. we're, we need to watch that tonight. But I'm gonna, we're going to check out the menu. Matt <laughs> 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 and I were talking about that before you hopped on the call earlier. Okay, great. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I saw it on Disney Plus and I was like, well, this, I'm watching this this weekend. Yeah, I mean, I'm... Because- I'm Hear what you think. Maybe, maybe you'll be on Matt's side. Maybe you'll be on my side. Yeah, maybe- it's really polarizing. Yeah. It's like it has. It's gotten like a lot of mixed reviews. I was talking to my old little brother about it. I was telling him like, "Hey, we're gonna watch this tonight," and he was like, "Oh, our older brother just told me that it was crap." <laughs> he was he was so bored. He just basically stopped watching it. I was like, "Well, I mean, our taste might be different." Yeah. <laughs> I, th- I think your older brother went in expecting a horror movie, and it's not really a straight-up horror movie. No, that's what I'm saying. I, I heard, like, it's a satire or, like, horror yeah, comedy, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm up for that. Yeah. I think it's way more of a comedy than it is like, an actual horror movie. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm, I'm all for John Lucasamo, so, yeah. Yes. I'm, I'm excited fun. for him. He was good. It, he was uh, good. Uh, I'll say it, it's a movie that is uh, – proponent of having needing just one more draft <laughs> somebody going through and and noticing things that they're hinting at that they never answer but that's just me. okay 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 <laughs> well like i said i i'm going there i i'm now going with, with an open mind and i'm gonna see what is what's gonna like i mean this is like, like is it it's the same when i watched the knives out i had no idea what i was expecting and i ended up loving it so yeah i mean like from what I've seen online, at least through Twitter and everybody who's seen it loved it. I'm definitely in the minority. I know of a couple people who didn't like it. Uh, <laughs> so. I mean, like, I, like I told my brother, I mean, he like my older brother, when Paranormal Activity came on, he said that it, he almost pissed his pants. He was so scared when I watched it. And I was like, oh, OK, because I value I, at the time I used to value his opinions. And when I watched it, I was like. This is the most boring shit ever. <laughs> that movie's not piss your pants scary. No, it's not. I was like, I actually it's called him in the middle of the night. Scary. I'm like, what the fuck were you on when we were watching it? <laughs> I 
actually scolded him for being like, you made me, you overhyped it for me. Like, this is the boring <laughs> shit ever. <laughs> so whenever, you know, whenever he says something was boring, I'm like, yeah, I'm taking that as a grain of salt. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah, because he said, he, he, he didn't like nope. And I'm like, yeah, our tastes have become different. Yeah, I yeah. did. Yeah. Well, I was going to say another movie I saw this last week. Um, was the last year's Scream movie, which I didn't, which I didn't see because all my friends told me it was bad. <laughs> which, like, I thought it was, I thought it was decent. I had a good time with it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I don't, I don't get why everyone I knew told me it was, it was a bad movie. Honestly, <laughs> like, I'm confused. Yeah, it, it, it was fine. It's, it's, not, it's not amazing. It's, it's fun. It's, it's a fun Scream movie. It's, it's, I don't know what more people wanted from Scream. Right. I, I, I mean, it's the same thing with people uh, not liking uh, Kong Skull Island. I and I'm like, Kong Skull yeah, Island. And, I'm, and I'm like, I loved it. <laughs> I mean, it, <laughs> it, has, it, so it, has, it has its problems, but it's still a good fucking movie. Like, it's a, a, it's a fun movie to watch. Movie. Oh, it's, a, a, it's a Scream movie. It's like, you just watch and you're having a good time. Yeah. <laughs> it's like... I, I thought everyone did a great job in it. It was fun seeing David Arquette come come back. Yeah, that was, like it, it was it was cool just seeing like everyone just like yeah we're back the new cast coming in. Jenna Ortega was like really good in it. I thought. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm excited. I'm actually interested to see what they're gonna do with Scream Six after this one. Yeah. I'm. I'm- yeah, wait, that happens in New York, doesn't it? Yeah, so yeah. that'll be in New York. It, so, like, figuring out what they're, I don't know, trying to do meta Maybe about it. Maybe commentary on the car movies that jump the shark. Like, some people <laughs> say, like, Friday the 13th jump the shark with uh, Jason Takes Manhattan. <laughs> <laughs> or, like, the, the character goes to space, like Leprechaun in space. Yeah. Or uh, Leprechaun in the hood. Right. Yeah, or, or or you know, Jason in space. <clears throat> yeah, though that feels like such like a like a a deep cut to be making fun of. Like I'm trying to think of what's popular now that they. What else, what else? What else can they do? Like I, exactly. You know, like, like there's only there's only so much you can do with with the scream formula. Yeah. So I'm interested to see what they do with it. I, I honestly though, I thought the kills are pretty good in in, in the newest scream. Like yeah. There's some pretty brutal kills in that movie. <laughs> where where does it take place? It's oh, t- Modesto, or like just outside. It takes place where the other ones took place. Well, not oh, I, so, is it so in it, Woodsboro? Yeah, yeah. It's in Woodsboro. Woodsboro. Yeah. Okay, okay. So they th- that continues to take part like in a small town, basically. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that, main- that's that's what I'm worried about with Scream Six because it happening in New York. I don't think. You know, as I don't, I can't, I can't say from New Yorkers because I've never been there. But I, I have a feeling like if this would happen, they were like, "What else is new? I don't care." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm walking here. I'm yeah. walking here. Someone's doubting me. Here. I'm walking here. <laughs> <laughs> but um, get you a <laughs> slice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I'm, I'm more intrigued about what they'll do. I'm curious. I don't know if it's gonna work. Yeah, but like one thing I thought was really funny that I was telling Matt, which means nothing to you, Bit Lemay, but it's just something I notice is the directors who did Scream, they also did um, what is it, Ready or Not was one of the movie they did. Yeah, they um, the one of them used to play in a ska band called Link Eighty, and he always throws little homages to like his old band days in his movies. <laughs> seeing his old record like in the background of one of the scenes. Oh, okay. <laughs> I like mean, that's a nice little lot. It's like a nice little Easter egg. Yeah, yeah. it's like I, I've noticed it in all the all his movies, even the short films he does. He always puts in a little reference, and I'm like, oh, that's kind of that's kind of funny. Wait, did he do it also in Not Ready or Not? Uh, Ready or Not has has a has a thirty second song clip from a song he did from back then. Oh, uh, okay, okay. I love that movie. Uh, I know, Ready- now I kind of want to watch it again to see if I can hear it. Huh? And then um. Yeah, like he does little, 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 he has little Easter eggs and stuff like that. So I noticed that in Scream. I was like, oh, that's kind of funny. Mm. Um, and besides that, I did read Laws of the Skies, which we were going to discuss today. Uh, <laughs> that has been pushed back to next week. 
Yes. All I could say is, good God, that book was fucking depressing. Oh, I told you. <laughs> Jump on the trauma train. Oh, my God. That was, that was a lot to take in. Um, I'm still recovering from it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it packs a dollop. <laughs> it, is, it is definitely something. <laughs> I also... Oh, you go. No, no, no. I was going to say, it's just, it's, yeah, it's, uh, I can't wait to discuss it next it's, week. Yeah, I, I don't want to start really discussing that, like, I, I but it's going to be a really great discussion. Yeah. Uh-huh. I think we'll have a really good time discussing the book. It was a very traumatizing book. And that second person <laughs> scene was, was mm-hmm. brutal. Like, oh, and yeah. it went on forever. And yep. I just, like, it needs to stop. Like, this yep. is too much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. At, at that point, you were like, please stop, please. And then you were just crying, like, oh, my God, it keeps going. <laughs> I also read um, a manga. I read two manga that I'd recommend. One is called Be Very Afraid of Kanako Anuki by Kanako Anuki. And she is a woman mangaka who does horror manga. Oh, yeah. And yeah like, I've heard of her. They were really fun, kind of like campy little horror stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like she's into weird horror. Yeah. Some of her stories are very weird. Mm-hmm. But like, um, I thought her stories were very fun. They had a good sense of humor about them. Her art style is kind of cool. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's like cutesy, but meets weird. Yeah, it's like cutesy, uh. but then like it gets really fucking like morbid, like in some of them. Yeah. And I thought like it's it, it's interesting because there's lots of horror manga that doesn't get translated. And like, there's just some stuff that we get. Cause in, in our horror community, and I know I say this a lot and I'm not trying to be mean, but like everyone puts Junji Ito on a pedestal. Junji Ito fucking rules. Like he's a really great artist, but I also mm-hmm. think there's so many other horror manga cause that like aren't really getting talked about. Um, and I do love Junji Ito. Like, I just got Black Paradox the other day, and I kind of read that. <laughs> I told um, you. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I'm just thinking, like, there, there's there's more to horror manga. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Another one I read, also horror manga, is I finally made my way to a Blood on the Tracks Volume 12. Oh, I haven't have you- gone that far. I have, <laughs> I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm still catching up. How far are you, Blood on the Tracks? Uh... When he is, he's been released. When he's been, oh, uh, it was, was it after he, he had the encounter with his cousin? Yeah. And he's been released? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so like. Uh, <laughs> it's like, oh, uh, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah this, I'm trying not to spoil. It's, it's too easy to spoil. A uh, I see. Things. It is a series about a boy who watches his mom push his cousin off a cliff Jeez. and enters oh. a severe period. I've talked about it before, Matt. Yeah, that sounded familiar for sure. And enters yeah. a severe period of anxiety and it mostly is like a psychological horror thriller about this mother's control and power over her son. Yes. Um, and how it affects him. And it's like the weird fuck is the Oedipus pot complex I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I think it might be further than me if he's been released. Are you after the time jump, Vitlame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm. I'm okay, there, you're further than me. You're further than me. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I know there's. I, I, I. There's the fact there's a time jump got spoiled for me, so I know where you are. Yeah. Um, in this one, he finds himself on trial for the murder of his cousin, because his cousin returned to his home, and he was in this weird dream state, and he pushed his cousin down a hell, where his cousin then froze to death. Oh my god. And now he's now he's in a trial for the murder of his cousin, and. The the most fucked up part <laughs> to me was his mother shows up to his trial mm-hmm. and just tells the court that she never wanted to be a mother and that she wanted to get an abortion, but mm-hmm. she never got an abortion. And she thanks her son for being a murderer because now she doesn't have the burden of being his mother. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my she God. Ba- she basically disowns him there. She's like, I'm through with you. Yay. And- and then he and then he shoves her down and starts choking her. Yep. <laughs> and then, and then, the they find him, then they find him. Uh, they send him to juvenile detention. And I know there's a, and in the next following game, there's a time jump where he's released as as an adult. Yeah. And it, and I guess 
the, the all those chapters leading up to the time jump were a fucking prologue. Yeah, yeah. So like the first like one hundred two chapters is a prologue. Oh, like crap! Was, was just getting started. Like what? <laughs> I'm yeah yeah. And when I found out, I was like, oh, so we're basically gonna watch the growing years of a serial killer, maybe. I'm 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 intrigued to see where he's gonna go with it. Like yeah. I, I I think Oshimi is a really great mangaka. I've read Flowers of Evil. I love Flowers of Evil. Is fucked. I love that one. Um, Happiness was great. I'm reading Welcome Back, Alice, which I have some some opinions about. But like the the dude's is such a talented artist. Like there's panels of Blood on the Tracks. I just want to like frame, just because they're <laughs> just like beautiful. But yeah, I'd say like that's that's a really really great like horror manga to get into if you want like something more on the realistic thing. kind of psychological side more so than the cosmic fantastical Jinji Ito side. Yeah. I'd say like Blood on the Tracks would be a really good one to check out. What about you, Matt? Yeah, so let's see. Um, I finished. I brought up this. La- brought this up last week, but I finished it after recording. Was uh, Jonathan Mayberry's Kagan the Damned, which I said most of it last week, so I don't need to go into too many details. It's a great fantasy cosmic horror kind of story that we I've mentioned wanting to read in the past, so I'm glad I could find it. And he. Jonathan Mayberry just does such a great job capturing not only kind of the the fantasy setting, but also just injecting so much cosmic I'm horror. Re- I'm reading Kagan right now, or Kagan. Kagan. You know, I, I, who knows? I, I say Kagan, but it might be Kagan. Who knows? You know, I'm reading, I'm reading it now. It's 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 great. It's super good. Uh, uh, then I won't spoil the ending. It just it ends on such an amazing cliffhanger. You're just like. Dang. And and I know the new book just came out, what, probably this past week. And there's also kind of an in-between short story. So I'm going to probably jump into those at some point soon because I this this is what I've been looking for. And it's super fun, super pulpy. It's it. I hear it, he brings in the uh, what was it? The King of Yellow mythos. Oh, yeah. Quite and, a bit. <laughs> the mythos shows up in it and stuff like it's very cosmic horror in points. Yeah, it there there is a there's a lot of uh, cult uh, stuff around Cthulhu and <laughs> and HP Lovecraft characters, and then there's this whole other group that's King in Yellow a group, and it, it it he it's it's really cool. And what's interesting with this is, and we again said this last week, where it's going to be a trilogy, and I always find it interesting when you kind of know either as the writer or as a reader that there's going to be more because he can add in hints that are probably going to play out in a later book. And I just find that interesting as a writer, because it's like you're planning such a far in advance that you're putting these hints in now that as the reader, you're kind of like, Hey, why am I seeing this rando person that can turn into a fish? But you know, that later that's probably going to play out. So it's just kind of an interesting, like, to study and be somebody trying to figure out why things are happening. Also, so, the way he writes battle scenes, fuck. Oh, oh yeah, no, it's great. He really does an awesome job capturing fights. There's a huge fight at the end that is contained, and again, I won't spoil what happens. But the it's contained, but there's so much stuff happening in there that it's just like you you see it all. He he. Yeah is amazing at that kind of stuff. So. Okay, after the, I just, the last chapter I read was after he found the uh, King's children. Oh God. Yeah. And he, he killed the, he killed the guy that was in the room and just he, the descriptions of just war in general is just, Oh yeah. It's, he's under, he, he, he just shows everything. He's yeah. Like, this what it's like. <laughs> yeah. This is what it's like. Yeah. <laughs> and there's it, it, it. The other fun thing is, is the violence lingers and like the aftermath lingers. So you see like people get hurt and they stay hurt. And it's like, well, yeah, that would be accurate. If you got cut a whole bunch, you're going to be in pain for a while. So again, he does a great job. Definitely worth checking out. Uh, if you're kind of in the fantasy and or cosmic horror stuff, but what I wanted to talk about a little bit more on was I've now reading, uh, or I finished Hari- Hiroko Oyamada's The Hole, which 
I feel like a couple months back, I talked about The Factory, which was her first book. This is her second book, and it's a novella. It's like 100 pages, so whatever. Uh, but she is continuing to be just this amazing, like, fantastical, weird. Uh, one description I was reading specifically for the whole is a Lynch, me, Hayo, Hayao Miyazaki kind of story. So, like, it, it, it's that kind of blend of the Miyazaki kind of, you know, spirited away, my neighbor Totoro and all that stuff where you kind of have these, like, fantastical things happening. But then she also injects just a little bit of this kind of Lynchian neighborhood thing of everyone being just off and just a little strange. So the whole, we are following Asa and her husband just got a new job. And so they move back into his old neighborhood. In fact, into the house next door to his mom and dad. And so they move. Asa doesn't have a job right now. The neighborhood's uh, kind of more of a country out in the country in Japan. So there, she doesn't have a car. There's not really like a great bus option. And so she's kind of just lost without a job. So you're kind of following her as she's kind of dealing with trying to figure out what to do. She's been working up until this point. So she's trying to figure out her life. And her husband's gone all the time because of the job. And it's super hot in Japan at this time of year for them. Mm -hmm. And she is walking one day and she sees a weird animal that the best way I could describe it is like a giant dog monkey thing <laughs> but she doesn't really describe she doesn't tell you she doesn't say it that she just says oh it looks like a giant dog with like a round head and really long claws and it, it's all black and and it, it she follows that she ends up falling into a hole that's just in this field next to a river that's just perfect size for her and then she meets one of the neighbors and the neighbor's really weird and like just talks about all these random things and only calls Asa as the bride, even though she's never met this person before. And the story progresses into weirdness. There's a grandpa that's wad watering the yard all hours of the day, doesn't speak, just smiles. And the description of this smile is like he wears this weird hat. So it's covering up most of his face except for his grin which gets bigger and bigger and there's a secret brother-in-law that she didn't know she had and he's uh lives in the shed in the backyard but like he he's kind of hidden from the family and and he's like a really weird person that hops around a lot and there's more weird creatures that dig holes and have more claws and then there's a bunch of kids that we don't know where they came from, they're just sort of there. And uh, yeah, it's just this bizarre thing. And she, having read The Factory and now read this, just she is so good at this kind of weirdness. And it's it's not horror, so I'll put that out there. Even though I said Lynch, it's more of that Twin Peaks weird community kind of thing. That's the same thing that happens here. Everyone here is really weird. They're all talking about random different things, and she never fully knows what's happening here in this neighborhood and on the street. And so it's it. I I'm loving this. It it was translated. I didn't mention the factory was also translated by David Boyd, so I should mention that too because he does a great job of this translation. And um, yeah, I I'm absolutely in love with her work, and I'm hunting down more of it it's I, it's hard to find i've been just finding bits and pieces at stores so whenever i see one i pick one up so it's but if you can find it at a place near you i highly recommend it it's just it's amazing and it's it's different than what everyone else is reading right now so it's kind of good um well, one a little bit ago i haven't got to it yet but it's in my it's in my pile yeah it, you you should it's it's cool it's it, it it reads fast because you just want to know she's always kind of leaving leading you somewhere. And so you're always like, all right, I'll just read a little bit more and a little bit more. And the book is short. So you're kind of like, oh, I can just keep going. <laughs> and so like it's like that perfect blend of, well, I can finish a novella in a day. Plus, the story is so strange that I want to see where it's going. 
So it yeah. definitely um, it, there's a, a really awesome style in there. So I highly recommend that. It's called The Hole by Hiroko Oyamada. And um, besides Law of the Skies and reading this uh, Laird Baron story, that that was pretty much my week. I feel that. Villamay, what about you? I haven't finished anything yet, but I've started on uh, I started listening to the audio book version of No Gods for Drowning by Haley Piper. Oh nice. For my Kindle. Mm-hmm. Uh the um the audiobook version is awesome. I don't remember who is narrating it, but she's doing a fantastic job. Uh it's really interesting. It's um it's a basically a blend of genres, which I find really fascinating. It's basically kind of like a noir with a little bit of police procedure, procedural. Um, it's dark fantasy and horror, all mixed into one. <laughs> I love it. And it's about basically about this um, woman named Lilac who has been for the past three days, has been killing um, and sacrificing uh, some humans in the name of her goddess mother, Lagoi, the goddess of reason, the many-headed. In hopes of, rip, like, because apparently before the story started, all the gods in the story, they uh, lay left. I, I don't I don't know if they ascended or if they just like, ah, we're done, we're, 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 we don't, we don't want to help you guys. And so she has been trying to contact her mother, and the only way to contact her, because she's a god, goddess of reason, is through sacrificial blood. So she's been just out killing people and trying to contact her mother, which doesn't seem to be working. And on the other side, we also get like the point of view of um, a flood fire, not a firefighter, like a flood fighter. Because every I'm I'm horrible explaining this by the way. <laughs> <clears throat> um, because apparently every year since the gods like abandoned this people like in it's kind of like a archipelago I think. Like I said, I'm not good at remembering <laughs> this, but basically after they after they went away, like this uh, the place has been flooded every year, like by a rainy rainy season. And um, with it, when with every flood come these creatures called the glories, which is basically like killer mermaids. Nice. And um, she, that person, the flood fighter, her name is Arcadia, which I love. It's such a cool name. <laughs> she is like fighting this, like trying to get everyone to evacuate the, uh, the houses before the flood arrives and before the glory glories yeah. arrive. And she is kind of gets caught up into this murder as well, which makes it even harder because Lilac is her lover. And then of course Arcadia doesn't know, but Lila know, Lilac knows. Like, <laughs> oh, you're in, you're involved in this. Fuck, I gotta be careful now. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and there's an, like and there's like a duo of detectives, like who have their own detective agency. They're also investigating the murders, and they also have connections to those two as well. So it's interestingly all like connects together. And um, yeah, it's really interesting, like what's happening, like how, like the um, the links that Lilac will go in order to basically connect with her mother again, like this goddess. Even though she's, even though she still has like a mortal mother waiting at home for her, okay, nice. huh? And um, just the lore behind it is really interesting. Um, though I still kind of wish because there are there are many just names just thrown around, like many goddess gods names and everything. I kind of wish we would have like she uh, Paley would have probably put more. F uh, put more no info into them, you know? Yeah. Because because these are all just ready, like they are like created. They're not like they're not existing gods like in our mythology. So the world building in regards to that probably could have been put more like into it. <laughs> but so far it's really interesting and um I'm about halfway through. So Maybe, hopefully, I can finish it next week. I can't promise anything because I'm listening to an audiobook and I 
Yeah. I usually just do it on when I'm going on my walks. So yeah. <laughs> but but I love everything from Haley. So this hasn't hasn't disappointed me in any way. Nice. No, that sounds really fun. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then I started watching The Rick. Oh, how is that? <laughs> It is interesting as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, what I found really funny is that this is basically the half cast of the Game of Thrones people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so we have uh, we have the bastard guy from the Night Watch who was really mean to John. Yeah. I don't know the character's name, but I was like, I know you. You are an asshole in that show, and look here, you're an asshole in this show as well. <laughs> And there's also the guy who uh, who, who played, jo- I think his name was Jorhas in uh, Game of Thrones. The one who was the bodyguard of Daenerys. Yes, okay. Uh, he plays the main guy who is like controlling or like he's not the, I wouldn't call him captain, but like he's like the director of this oil rig. That's um, a bit, of, bit away, like away from Scotland. Which I found interesting because I didn't know they had oil rigs there. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait, what? In near Scotland? Yeah, so, right. So basically it's not that far. Like it's not like probably if you were in Faroe Islands, you probably would be able to see maybe some of these rigs. I don't know. And it's like, ugh, I don't want to see that. <laughs> but this is just me living in you know living in Iceland in the middle of fucking nowhere where we try to keep nature as untouched as possible. <laughs> um, so it's about it's about this crew who are kind of stranded on a rig that's uh, somewhere near Scotland, and suddenly they find there's this huge tremor, like basically an earth earthquake, and. Um, one of the crew members he gets injured, and w- and when that all happens, there's this h- huge fog that surrounds the place, and along with the fog, there's like this kind of weird ashes. Hmm. And if you come in contact with that ashes, something happens to you. <laughs> okay. So I I can't really I can't, <laughs> I don't want to say too much because it might spoil, but this is basically what is happening. Yeah, uh, it's kind of like um, the atmosphere I'm feeling with it. It's kind of like the fog, uh, the mist meets the thing. Oh, but okay. not not but not in a way that there's an alien there that is trying to imitate you or something like that. But it's more like the everyone's not trusting each other. Yeah, and interesting. Yeah, so they're basically trying to understand what is happening. Um, and they're caught off from the world, so they don't know what's happening outside of this rig. And I, yeah, I have like three episodes left, so it, it'll be interesting how it will end. But so far, like, I, I'm intrigued. I, it's like, it's not boring. Well, that's good. What's this weekend? And uh, the only thing other than I'm also reading, I decided to read the um, manhwa that inspired or that was adapted, uh, which uh, Sweet Home was adapted into. Oh, and the manhwa for Sweet Home is actually quite different from the. Uh, I know, action. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm noticing right now as I'm reading, and I'm like, Whoop, this is not like the, uh, the adaptation. I, I like the manhwa. I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. The manhwa is really good, especially because you know, with the manhwa, the with the, how they do the paneling, is that it creates a lot more depth and dread. Oh yeah. Because you're scrolling down and scrolling down and scrolling yes. down. Yep. So it really captures this dread, which the adaptation did not. But of course, the adaptation did amp up the uh, monsters. <laughs> what? Yeah. Wait, what is this? <laughs> oh, you haven't seen Sweet Home? No. So it's, on, it's on Netflix, so you should buckle up and watch that because it's really good. Okay. It's a, it's a Korean horror series on Netflix. It's really fun. Yeah. Um, and it's based is so in, in Asia there's this thing called Manhua. And we have um web we use like the Webtoon app here in the mm-hmm. States to read Manhua stuff. Yeah. And what it is, it's just an online webcomic, but they're made for phones. So the idea is instead of reading a comic left to right, you're scrolling down mm-hmm. as you read through the story. Oh nice. Okay. Yeah, it's really nice. And Sweet Home is basically about this um 
apartment complex that is like up on a hill and um, you just follow the residents of that apartment complex as the world is just basically going down and people are turning into monsters. Okay, <laughs> nice. And it, yeah, and you kind of just are following along like how they deal with it um, and how they kind of fend off against the monsters. And I, I haven't gone to the part in the Marwa, but I hope it doesn't contain the same scene in the um, adaptation because that made me like angry cry. <laughs> Like in the adaptation, there's a, a guy who is so abusive to his wife. And the wife is just this, you know, meeker Korean woman, submissive, who doesn't say anything and just let it happen. And I, I uh, it, it makes me angry. <laughs> and, you know, she gets the most horrible fate there. <laughs> it's like she gets no redemption arc. She doesn't, she doesn't. Like, yes, it doesn't get what she deserves. And I was so angry with that, that path. I, I understand they went there, but I was like, she did not fucking deserve that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. But you know what, Villame? Mm. Protein. Yes. <laughs> who's a giant muscle monster, and all I can say is protein. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> like, like yeah, I, I agree. I really liked, like, how they made the monsters. It was interesting. Yeah. But that but odd. that but that scene with um oh, it's in it's in the manga. I can't remember if it, if it was an adaptation. Like when he first discovers the first monster, that was creepy. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's like he like it's in the it happens next door to him and he's like what the, what the fuck is this noise? And he just goes and checks and this his next door neighbor just went and stole his like delivery of ramen <laughs> and he's like well that fucker and he's gonna come and just barge into her room and just call her off but then he just hears this really crunch chomp noises and he's like what the fuck and then just in the back like it's it's not uh, it's out of view and suddenly it's, it's like the, you hear like this ping 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 and then go, like something that falls on the floor and he's just like what the fuck is that and it's the cat collar Bloody. Oh, God. Yeah, and I'm like, nope. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that sounds insane. Yeah. So, yeah, I've been, I've been, that's basically what I, I haven't finished anything, but, I, but I've been enjoying, <laughs> but I've been enjoying what I've been reading and, and watching. Why don't we introduce this Laird Baron story? Because it was so much fucking fun. Yeah. Yes. I have a confession to make, though. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I ha this is my first Laird, Laird Baron story. It is. This, this is a good first story to be with. Uh, yeah, I mean, why are you surprised, Matt? <laughs> I, I keep ha having to explain to you that I live in fucking Iceland. <laughs> and the, the amount of horror books that I got when I was a kid was non-existent. <laughs> Fair it point. It was basically Stephen King, and it was horribly translated. Oh. <laughs> with really, it was really bad covers that did not want to, that did not scream horror at all. <laughs> so yeah, no, I did not. I have not read Grant Campbell or uh, Richard Layman. So yeah, <laughs> this is the first time that I read Laird Baron, and I will read more here well, on uh, because I really like his style. I'm glad uh, we introduced you to it. Yes. <laughs> yes. So I, I kind of want to do a Richard Lehman episode just to get Bill May's reaction to Richard Lehman <laughs> novel now. Yes. Because we've read Richard Lehman before, Matt, and you know, you know, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what we read. The Islands. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I blocked that out. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was better. You know, much better, much better. <laughs> I'll just say I'm that. just saying it would be funny to get Vitley's reaction. That's all. I, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, that's all. 100. I'm assuming it's gonna be fun. So yeah, it, it's something. I'll say that. <laughs> but no, this was you know it's so when we were when we made this call, you know, I was just trying to see what we could find online, and actually this was, uh, and I think we even said it. It's a pseudopod. There, John Paget does the narration and so it was nice to find a free one so if 
like, you know, Vitlame, if there's somebody else out there who hasn't read Laird Baron, this is a free option to get you going. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it, yeah, it, it's definitely captures his style, which is he likes to kind of, I mean, he takes his time a little bit. Everything kind of serves what the story is, but we're kind of very taking our time with this, these two couples, they're going on there. They're going to go on a, this, this trip, this camping trip and very beginning of the story, they find this little journal in this weird, like kind of antique camp store, general store thing. And that sort of leads us right into them, uh, into lots of occult stuff, which, which is interesting. Cause again, like with his style, we find out, so we have, uh, it's a first person through, I'm going to say Willem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Willem it, I would basically, he's like kind of the new person in this little group, but his, his boyfriend, uh, Glenn has been hanging out with it's Victor and Dane, it, it, like their college friends and stuff like that. And as we get through the story, we find out that the three of them were into some more of the weird, uh, kind of occulty stuff. Which oh, I think yes. is so very which interesting. I should say this ties into many other Laird Baron stories. Yeah, you know, like the, uh, it's the cults. which one? The cult, the the whole book that leads into it. It's all tied to the Order of the Old Leech. I okay, uh, that's what I thought. The book, the book was the like the, the when they described the symbol on the book. Yeah, that's the symbol for the Order of the Old Leech. I that's so mm. funny. I knew that but i didn't know that <laughs> so I, this ties into a lot of laird baron's other other stories mm-hmm. makes sense i i did like how he thought at first that it was the aurora Boros. yeah yeah and then he was like but um, but upon closure inspection it looks more fatter like a leech we have, and i was like oh uh, yeah okay it, and he's like, oh, it's broken. It's not eating mm-hmm. itself. It's open to eat something else. And I was mm-hmm. like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I could almost imagine it being like the book being like that circle, like the broken circle being like embossed. Yes. Yeah. I was thinking that too. <laughs> but but yeah. So I'm assuming because this is this is from Occultation and other stories, his short story collection. But not really, though, because this is more a novella. Oh, yeah. Like yeah. the, uh, yeah, like I think all the, his other stories are like similarly linked. So it's like basically a novella collection. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they, and they're all, so the stories in that novella collection, they're all connected? Um, no. Uh, it's a loose connection. So it's like he doesn't bring up the order of the old each in every story he writes. Oh, okay. Um, but like in a lot of stories he does write, you'll get like either a reference to it or if it gets more, if he's writing a cosmic horror story, there's like an eight out of 10 chance. It's an old leech story. It's, um, it's kind of like, a you know, kind of like a, a Lovecraft concept of like, well, there's this broader mythos and maybe these yeah. stories aren't fully connected, but they're all, it will say in the, uh, the universe that he's written. So these things kind of all play together. So kind of like Baron, you would say these are somewhat in his own Baron verse. Mm -hmm. And, and, and so like, they're going to come across very similar things. Yeah. There's, there's a book called the order of the old leech and it's a Laird Baron tribute anthology. And it's a bunch of different authors writing old leech stories as a tribute to Laird Baron. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So, but yeah, this story, like it, it's so interesting because it is, it's about these two couples and the, the, you know, I like how it, we, we kind of see them like hanging out. They're all getting really drunk and just having a good time. It all, even before they go on this trip. So we're kind of seeing this just before thing and we're getting these little, just little, like it, Again, his it's so funny his style because it is he's just kind of taking us along and he's like, here they are, they're at the bar having fun and 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 oh by the way, Willem is looking up more on what's happening in this journal and trying to find people who might know about it because it's kind of secret. And oh now they're 
on their trip and or like, oh, they hear a story about an old friend who died. And, and so it's just like he's just he's just taking his time, really getting us into this thing. <laughs> it's like I, I and I love that, like for him. And it's funny because I just started reading um, Corpse Mouth by John Langan talking about John Langan. And, and even the intro in that talks about his and and we know reading Langan's stories. He's also kind of that idea of like. I'm going to take you into the story, but I'm going to like really smoothie into this like creepy cosmic horror thing happening. <laughs> yeah. Just, it's yeah. just this kind of like, cause it, it honestly could just be this story could just be a, a follow through on these two couples and mm-hmm. how they deal with being gay around mm-hmm. people in a smaller community that they go camping near and like, one of that, like Willem and Glenn are sort of feel like there's something kind of happening between them. So it could honestly just be a story about that. But then Mm -hmm. Laird Barron's like, Oh no, we got this journal and we got this weird Dolomin thing. (laughs) And he had like this person that went missing and you're like, Oh crap. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I really like the fact that they, you know, this could have been like an entirely different story uh, that you still were, totally engrossed with yeah Yeah. like like even though you wouldn't even care about the cosmic horror element to it just listening to their stories just how they are moving along in this world was really well done yeah i love like especially the way the character the dialogue went between the characters like laird baron has such a real good knack for like quick dialogue between the characters as well yes yes yeah. like you you can tell like from the dialogue each person had their own distinct personality yeah like you didn't and you didn't really he didn't really have to almost like give them descriptions just give him the dialogue and you would know it instantly like what kind of person that was yeah you would you would you wouldn't be able to imagine it just in your mind's eye like how they would look like and it was perfect yeah it was great uh, and like and I know for a listener, if you haven't read this or listened to it, like as we're describing it, it it is though everything sort of leads to the next thing, which I think is really awesome. So like, you're, oh yeah, it was a, it was a, like a, a good slow build. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and you're but like, at the same time, but you weren't bored by it. You were exactly. entertained the entire it always, time. Yeah, it's always entertaining. His text. Yes. His prose is so smooth too. I know it's really yeah. good. I was like, yeah, this is like this is why I said like I'm I'm gonna get, buy more of his books and I'm gonna read more. <laughs> yeah, well, he that's... has four short story collections and I think like one novel. Well, and then you got his uh, uh, Isaiah, Isaiah Coolridge stuff too. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. He, has, he has three crime novels. Yeah. Which I also have, slowly get into Gosling. Yeah, stuff. there's there's one novella that I have my eyes on, which is kind of funny because the the, the, the novel the novella's title is X for Eyes. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I read that one. That one's good. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I'm definitely reading that one next. <laughs> After I finish of course, the short story collection or novella yeah. collection. Yeah. No, it's awesome. Yeah. This it, it he he yeah he's got just such a way with kind of writing stuff and and like he can the i i have the th- i have three of the st- short story collections and they all just kind of like you just read them and you just get pulled right in you know they're mm-hmm. ones where like for the last couple of years you know i've been doing like a short story a day i've been reading it through different collections and anthologies but like laird baron stuff you sort of just want to just read so i don't pause <laughs> for oh, yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Because I just love, like, again, in this one, it you have all these little things. Like, when you get the chat with, where, or when he finds online one of the people who owned this journal previously, Rose, mm-hmm. it, it's such, like, a small thing of, at first, that we it's think o- about. It's, it's almost like an afterthought. Yeah. <laughs> I know, where you're, it, like, I and totally kind of forgot, like, yeah. by the time I get to the end. And I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it was so funny because it it felt like an afterthought, and as a reader, you'd be like, eh, "I mean, there's probably nothing of importance." Yeah. But then, but then as the story goes along, it's they he, like the characters still mention that person. And you're like, "Oh yeah, yeah. what ever happened of that?" And yeah. then you come, and then you come to the ending. You're like, "Oh, 
<laughs> or even like something like Tom. So there's their their friend Tom, and we get a, a version of what happened to him and why he died. And then we get we see him at night, which I like. That part was so like haunting because you're not sure. You're like, yes. is he a is Willem drunk and dreaming this, or is this a real thing that happened? I uh, I also love the yeah. thing when Tom appears uh, that you know Willem thinks like, why isn't my grandmother here, or why isn't yeah. my yeah. father here? And he's like. You think they have something to say to you? Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. He just, like, sits and he's, like, gets comfortable naked on his chair. And he's like, ah, oh, no, no, no. I have something to say to you. Yeah. <laughs> and you're awesome. like, it's so creepy. And you're like, oh, we're going this territory now? Okay. Yeah. What was it? There was that one scene in this, too, where that character was, like, he was describing somebody as walking like they were, like, pretending to put on masks on their face or they pretend to put a ski mask on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just like picturing that was like the creepiest thing. Like, yes, seriously. It was so unsettling. It, that's the thing. That's what I liked about the story is because like I said, we were just following along this, these two couples and as like you are, you could, you're totally engrossed in it and you're like, okay, this is so interesting. And then you kind of have to pause when he adds the creepy stuff and you're like, that's a whole nother layer there. Yeah, exactly. Where you're just like, wait, oh crap. And like, and it's perfect. Just this, this like setup and just how it kind of rolls into that. Be like, I, yeah, it's just, he does it so organically. Yeah. It just feels so natural to him. <laughs> yeah. And I love that. Like I said, it was so it was so funny. Like when before Tom arrives, you're just like following William, and he's getting really annoyed that Glenn was so drunk, and he was like he wanted to have sex with him because the other two were doing it like rabbits. Yeah, his his yeah. words, not mine. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then you're like, oh yeah, I mean, I I totally get it. It's so annoying, and you were just kind of waiting for the next day to arrive but no he wakes up and there's a naked man on his chair and he's like i want to have a chat with you laddie yeah. <laughs> and like i'm a black irishman this is what we do yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well and that what that like even that scene is so perfect and is like it what it shows us that laird baron does because it like this setup of they're out partying they're drunk he wants to have sex with him. He does it so he goes downstairs because he's like, I'm done. I'm going to sleep on the couch. And then that gives us to Tom. And that's the same for because like I kept thinking about it when we get there's a big like brawl. There's like a mm -hmm. like a, a bar brawl later in this story. And as you're reading it and you're kind of getting to the aftermath, you're like, oh, this is a really interesting like thing that he, that he's showing us. But you're kind of like, well, where is this le like? You know, again, it's like the researching of Rose. You're like, what's mm -hmm. this is just showing us them fighting with the local townies. Mm -hmm. But that's what takes us to them sort of keeping themselves further and further out away from the town because they don't want to get arrested. And yeah. that in turn leads us to them finding this weird tower and then finding the Dolman thing, which I like. I, I had to look up what a dolman was. <laughs> like I kept thinking of like I was like I'm not sure what this is implying, but okay. Could could, could you explain for my benefit and for also the, <laughs> the listeners who might not want to or not? Yeah, yeah. So let, let me find the official description because <laughs> <laughs> I was like trying to think of what this might be, and the best. All right, I'm getting to. Oh no! Of course, this is pulling me up to the wrong person. <laughs> it, it, well, it's basically just uh, a, a tomb. Oh, okay. <laughs> but like, it sort it's sort of. It's such a mundane word for it, though. Yeah, it it the way I can describe it, looking at pictures, is it's sort of like a Stonehenge, but not uh -huh. all of them. But like three, uh, it uh, it has like a stone entrance that looks like the you know, like a Stonehenge, two stones mm -hmm. and the one on top. But then then it, it go you go in and, and the inn is it, so there's like a chamber 
So oh, it, so yeah, so like basically a cavern, like almost a man-made cavern. Yes, exactly. So <laughs> for everyone else, that's what they are. <laughs> okay, okay. But if you if you're looking online, it's not John Dolman. It's just plain no. or Chris Dolman. It's just Dolman. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's good. Okay, that, I have so, a better clearing of words. That yeah. I yeah, like when we get to that part, like okay, my mind's eyes, like okay, I can I can picture it now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but. <laughs> What I also really liked about this, uh, like, as you mentioned, they get into, as when they're going on this trip, um, they get into this pop role between, like, frat boys. Yeah. And I love the fact that, um, I love the fact that they, um, uh, Baron basically just puts on this dual theme of being the others. Yeah. Yeah. And and it's not just being, you know, because they like they're like all four of them, they're all they're they're homosexuals, of course. But there's also cast the thing about them being outsiders in the fact that they are um searching for the occult. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did appreciate that. Like he put this two themes, like, yeah, they're they're different because society deems them stuff different, which is so <laughs> fucking stupid. But they're also different because there's a reason for it that might be different. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like I forgot until you just mentioned that, but yeah, there is like some like little lines here or there in the story where they're kind of talking about they prefer being in uh, at least Willem prefers to be in a town, like a city, and he's like, I'm not. I don't like these kind of small communities and how they're all. You know, there's even a part where they're like in a small town, one of the towns that they're visiting, and it's all shut down and and and. Like, cause it's mm -hmm. after, I don't know, eight or something yeah, like yeah, it's, yeah. it's late, but like, it does kind of show you that concept of here are these, you know, these people who are from a bigger city, they love to staying out super late. And, and then they go into these small kind of in insular communities and they are the different ones. And then we also find out that some of these people still use, you know, the moon and the sun to determine mm. when to farm and all these things. So it's like, yeah. just, just these little hints, just to, again, like you said, get us to, these people are different than, than who they're visiting. Mm -hmm. And I just, I don't know about you guys, but that pop brawl scenes were amazing. Yes. <laughs> they it were was, so Eric, Eric fun. Fight. Yes. He, he was really good fight scenes. Yes, yeah. it was so good. Uh, I I was rooting for them the entire time. It was amazing. <laughs> well, and I love too. Like you know, I mean, like they they held, they were they took those frat boys out. <laughs> yeah, because as yeah. you like as you mentioned, and as I mentioned earlier, because they are they expected this. Yeah. Like Glenn even said, I knew this was going to happen, and I came prepared. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I like a. One thing I like too about that scene, and this kind of ties back when Matt was talking about Jonathan Mayberry, when like the characters were injured too, like they did, they weren't just better instantly after that scene. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like they were like fucked up for for. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like all all the way leading to the end of the book. Yeah, yeah. like they like like I think that was a very realistic aspect that Baron put into the story. Yes, yeah. I also like, but I find that it was interesting. Do you remember the scene when um, Willem is talking to Victor? And I loved Victor, by the way. Yes. He, I mean, I know he was kind of portrayed as a stereotypical uh, gay guy, but I still loved him for the, even despite in spite of that. Yeah. And <laughs> when when he like casually mentions to Willem, like, "Oh yeah, by the way, I carry a switchblade." Yeah. So so <laughs> I carried him a sock. So Dan Dane is not gonna cheat on me. He knows I'm gonna cut off his balls if he does yeah. that. <laughs> Which was a really nice spice to that character. Yeah. Yeah. But I, but I was still a little bit disappointed that he didn't use the fucking switchblade in the, yeah. in the pop roll. Yeah. He said he was just flailing around with his feet. And I was like, here's the switchblade, my man. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a reason why you carry it. Now it's the time to use it. <laughs> Well, and I think that's interesting, too, that you bring up uh, Victor, because that is part of the thing that we sort of get throughout, which I think then leads us to the end with Tom, is we have Glenn sort of jealous of Victor and Willem, 
he like yes. we get little scenes of like when those two are chatting, Glenn gets really kind of jealous of it and holding hands and just a little bit more involved. But then also we sort of get we see and we don't know. They don't tell us what's happening there. But like Glenn and Dane are, are hanging out a lot more and they're being out re- being really chummy. Yeah, being really yeah. chummy. And and a Glenn is too chummy. You ask me. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, if I was Willem, I'd be like. I need to have a talk. Yeah. Which <laughs> or, even or, like, or I'm going to kick you out. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, which I thought was interesting. And I just thought of now just to kind of, I guess. All right. Let's we'll, we're, we're going to say spoilers now but to get us near the end. Um, again, pseudopod has this accolation has this definitely check it out. Um, it's super good, but okay. So spoiler chat. And this is, I just picked it up and just want to see if everyone else was thinking the same thing I'm thinking. So Glenn starts kind of smoking, which we get an early chat about where Willem had helped him stop. And it was like a big ordeal. Like, Hey, you need to, you know, when you quit an addiction, it's tough. And he, so, but anyway, we start seeing Glenn doing it more. And what I'm picking up, which leads us to the end is Tom was smoking and knew that Glenn was smoking. Mm -hmm. Was that like a hint at the beginning that those two were together? I might have been actually. Yeah, I mean, he Willem asked about that, asked Victor about that, and Victor was like, I mean, he he said that Glenn kind of wasn't a type, but he also said like, but Tom went went around, you know. Yeah. So I mean, I have. I have a sneaking suspicion that maybe hooked up. That's what I was wondering, because at the end, don't they like even hint that at that too, that Glenn really wanted to be with Tom and was willing to trade anything to get with Tom. Mm-hmm. And they so, do. yeah. And, and that's where like, I, as I was reading it and I got to that end part, I was like, Oh, that's interesting because I didn't really see that, especially when they're kind of the way they kind of hint at what, Tom's story, the fake story on how he died, and then the real story how he died. But I never really picked up on them at some point being together. (laughs) So that's where I was just trying to figure out, like, if there was something in there. And the only thing I could think of was that one smoking with the ghost or not ghost of Tom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I we we kind of just we don't get. We get little hints because, especially when Tom arrives and asks for smugs, uh, yeah. he he knew that there would be cigarettes in this yeah. house. Yeah, and he and and he knew that. Judging by Willem, he was like, "No, you says you don't you don't smoke, but I know your boyfriend does." Exactly. So. So yeah, I think that, like we don't like there's subtle hints that they probably hooked up. I don't I don't know if they like got together together like he and Willem did but uh, they definitely hooked up yeah which I just think is interesting and is like my my one like hang up is because when we kind of get to that scene with Rose I think it is at the end there where she's like well he always wanted to be with Tom Mm I was like oh did he I never like we didn't know that (laughs) I think it is I I think it was a subtext thing too as well where it's like it could have been something even before the story started that these characters are kind of already working on. Yeah. So it's like this re- revelation for the character. Uh-huh. Yeah. More so much of it is for the reader. Okay. Yeah. But I, I, I also think we kind of get this hint when Glenn is telling Willem the real, what really happened to Tom. Yeah. And you kind of hear the desperation when he saw it, like there was a hand that grabbed him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and just hearing the desperation and just hearing the horror, like the horror in his voice, you can tell that he's like, hasn't gotten over it. Yeah. So, and so, yeah, I think it like there's a connection there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, like, and I picked up the idea that those two, they like, they weren't, they were in a bad, maybe not bad spot, but they were in troubled waters just mm-hmm. because of different things. I mean, again, like, sleeping on the couch and be like, there's even that scene where he's, uh, he's upset that Glenn is smoking, but doesn't say anything. And he's yeah. like, oh, I just don't want to make him mad. And so like, yeah, we, yeah. we get a little, 
little pieces or the gun. <laughs> like so we oh, get yeah, little yeah, pieces yeah. here or there. But but I mean like and it doesn't bother me. It doesn't ruin the story. I was just trying to like figure out. I was like, oh this is that's an interesting kind of take on that. Mm-hmm. Um I still feel this realistic though because this is a really good realistic take on on a on a relationship. Yeah. Oh a hundred percent. And I think it helps it's being awesome from Willem's perspective because yeah we we as the reader and Willem as our character and our perspective we're not going to know everything that happened and is mm-hmm. going on so yeah. uh yeah that totally works um, yeah i did not see victor getting taken that was no nope. uh, <laughs> nope. that, that, that caught was, me by surprise that was, that was a shock for me yeah that <laughs> caught me by surprise like i said i was listening to the audiobook and i just had to pause of like wait what <laughs> Yeah, I was also, like, wait. When they when they see like when when they have the dream and the whole like thing comes up but it was oh this imagery fucking creepy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, oh it, man, that was it's yeah. just hard you can't explain it, but it's just so it's like <laughs> a cloud with like little proboscises kind of prodding out of it. Yes. Like oh mm-hmm. that was so anyway. Yeah. It's and a, just also just the description of the fungi and everything. It was just really creepy. Yeah. Oh god, the like the cl- like clouds of like orange dust or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. You're just like, oh yeah. god, don't go in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the will. I didn't I honestly did not expect Victor getting there, and I was really sad. But like I said, because Victor was my favorite. I know, and I mean, like, uh, y- yeah, I was super bummed when they were like, oh, yeah, this, like, weird vine thing shot into him, and you're just like, oh, no. <laughs> and I just love how, you know, because we heard, like, like with the dialogue, how Victor's dialogue was in yeah. the beginning. But then when he's taken, like, his dialogue changes, yes. and it's super creepy. Yes. That it's was... like we like we have taken him. We're gonna take the others too. And I'm like, no. Yeah, right? Oh god, always digging into his chest. I was just like, and I also it. I also love the fact that even though him and Glenn they uh, you know they managed to get away, and they did the thing that you know we know people probably wouldn't do. They like in this kind of situation, they went to the police and explained everything. Yeah. And then I was like. You have to also consider that what you're saying is complete fabrication of your minds. Yeah. And and I also love the fact like that he added like, oh yeah, and they noticed the hundreds of bu- bottles of beers in our car. Yeah. <laughs> and they had they unfortunately had to take into consideration Victor's weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and I was like, yeah. like when he was like describing this, like, you're 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 not. You're not doing your story justice, my man. <laughs> like this, <laughs> this is this is not helping. <laughs> like you're not. This is not helping, and you you should realize that. Like stop, stop, stop. <laughs> right. Uh, it's it was, like he, it's like he should have been like in the middle of the interrogation, be like, oh, I see where this is now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's but it was, great. But it was but, good, and and I actually I I honestly thought that would it would end there. Yeah. Yeah. And um, well, basically, it would end with um, with Rose taking Glenn. Yes. But it, because it was a, it was a, for me, it was a really good ending. Like it was creepy, and it would have left you be like, "What the fuck?" Yeah. I love. I just imagery for the ending too. Just that image yes. we end the story on is yes perfect. Like this hand coming out of the cellar. I was like, nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. 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 I just, uh, yeah. Or like, so, Glenn is missing. They don't know mm-hmm. where he is. Yeah. Vic- <laughs> Victor's locked up. Yeah. yeah. So, it, but at the same time, I also feel like the epilogue, I would call it the epilogue, basically, yeah. of him, of him, you know, trying to take over his life, like trying to move on, moving in with another guy. I think his name was Butch. I think so. <laughs> yeah. So- Which is... Kind of funny and interesting. I like, oh yeah, this is my boyfriend Butch. <laughs> oh, it, it's it's Bert. Oh, Bert. Okay, I heard Butch for some reason. I'm like, oh, that's that's fitting. You know, a, for, a farm guy named Butch. 
Uh, yeah, perks. <laughs> That's also fitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I like the fact that Leo, like, he was trying to move on in his life, and he had like two dogs, and got, took his cat with him. Thank God that no animals died in this. Yeah. <laughs> and um, but and but it also ended great there too. Like he was there every like, and it ended like every night. I'm sitting by in my chair with my gun, waiting for Glenn to come. Yeah. yeah. And I was like. I was like, ooh, that's a good ending, too. It's a very yes. good ending. Honestly, uh, I think you, you definitely enjoy more of Laird Baron's stuff. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, after this, I'm like, yeah. You, <laughs> you, you're a good writer. Me, me, me fan. <laughs> <laughs> you English good, write good. Me, big, big fan. <laughs> me, big, big fan. Me, me, no, me, no, write good like you write good. Yes. <laughs> Oh my god, that's perfect. Yeah. I mean, if if Laird gets the chance of maybe listening to this, I hope he gets a laugh out of this. Yeah. <laughs> and I apologize, Laird, if you are gonna listen to this, I will read more. You you definitely have a fan in me. <laughs> Laird Laird's stuff is honestly really great. Like I think he is when let's say like 30 years down the line, I think people will be talking about Laird Baron's fiction. The way like we today talk about Ramsey Campbell's fiction or H.P. Lovecraft's fiction, like I think Laird is going to be like a classic cosmic horror writer. Mm-hmm. Like once oh, once these books have entered the the age they need to be to be a classic, um, <laughs> I I do really see that. I think he's a he's a fantastic writer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I mean, because he he does he reads like that kind of classic. <laughs> modern classic style of when you're reading this, you're like, well, it feels like something that could have been around forever that belongs in this kind of level, but it's, it's new. I mean, you know, uh, new as in like 10 years ago for some of this stuff. Um, so like it, it but it, it does, it just reads like this kind of out of time, classic kind of stuff that I think will, like you said, it'll stand the test of time and it will be one of those things in the future people will be like this is this was one of our one of our next level people that we you know a lot of people appreciate now but we'll appreciate even more as time goes on oh 100 percent. so mm-hmm. de- definitely highly for everybody you know hunt these things down you know he does he has what you said four collections he's got short or he's got novels he's got the mystery ones that are out all, all of this stuff is just definitely worth hunting down and checking yeah. out. And just we wish we we we, uh, we wish him a speedy recovery. Yeah, he goes well in the hospital. Yeah. Um, I wish him the best. He's he's honestly one of my favorite writers. Yeah, and you know it's it's awesome to see the good the go. I keep wanting to say good fund me. I don't even know what that means, but the go fund me. It, you know, it has I think it reached its goal like a couple days ago and they even pushed the goal out to help for after the hospital. And that I think it's even matched that. So, like, it's yeah. so cool to see people are stepping up and helping him out. And let's hope we can continue to do that because it he deserves it. And those bills are not going to be cheap once he <laughs> gets out of the hospital. No. Mm-hmm. No. Like, <laughs> I'm I'm I'm. I don't even I don't even want to know how much it's gonna be. Like that's gonna be rough. Yeah. Um I really do hope everything works out for him. And we wanna get more fiction from him. He's gonna he's gonna give us more work. We need more old leech. We need yeah. more old leech. We but um do. next week we'll be moving from this cheery topic to uh, a bunch of children who don't survive a uh, weekend in the woods. <laughs> and it's very depressing. And it's called the Laws of the Skies. It'll be an interesting discussion, but a heavy one. <laughs> yep. And I will do what we can to try to keep it light. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Vit LeMay, where can our listeners follow you, uh, follow you at? Uh, they can see me and follow me on Twitter at Vit S. And Matt, what about you? I am also on Twitter at Brandenburg DM. And you can follow me on Twitter at Rudy53088 and be sure to give Abyss a follow with added to staring. And this is Richard Gerlach saying keep staring. <laughs> <laughs>